family, I'm Dr. Jackie Green. This is Permission Talk. This first episode will focus on all things Permission Conference. On stage, behind the stage, under the stage. Y'all, we're diving deep into absolutely everything that happened. You don't want to miss it. Let's go. This is a moment that I feel is beautiful because it is a manifestation of prayer. And when you hear people say stuff like that, it's like, oh, that's so churchy. It's <laughs> not. I really feel like this is a moment where we're pulling back the layers of women that you find on stages and they preach these powerful mm -hmm. messages. I wanted a place where we could come together and um, I don't know, like empty our cups in a way that is not so stuffy mm -hmm. so that you can kind of understand the context behind what it takes to make experiences that you see and that you love happen. Um, how I actually felt uh, as I was doing it emotionally, I think another beautiful part of a table like this is I'm bringing in beautiful community that actually does everyday life with me. So even things that I would want to hide or I haven't thought about, they are beautiful in that, that they will bring that stuff to the table so that you would be able to benefit from it, not just you but me because I think one thing that is really beautiful is sometimes you don't see yourself the way other people do and mm -hmm. so that's what this table is about it's permission talking you know permission this whole banner is all about freedom and so I want to kind of dialogue have conversation about real life situations mm -hmm. that women really face whether you are a women in power or you are a mommy at home empowering your children to be all that they've been called to be or you're a wife that's standing alongside your husband and you recognize that the lord has created you specifically for something also um i think if you're single whatever facet of life you find yourself in old young you know happy sad i want this to be a table that's safe mm -hmm. um that's free i told these girls that although there will be cameras all around that I wanted us to have a real conversation there's nothing yeah. off limits um one thing that I firmly believe in is real talk and real work like I want you to hear us talk about stuff that we'll do and you actually see us do it mm -hmm. what you don't know is that this conversation about even a permission podcast started 2019 so it's been three years in the making yeah. of us or two and a half where we're brewing on that the Lord brought to our mind that we might be doing something like this but he doesn't always manifest at the same moment that he brings to light mm -hmm. that there might be something coming and I think that's even encouragement to anybody watching maybe there's something brewing there's a baby that is being formed in me and shape but you don't have to be discouraged that it doesn't show up the same year that mm -hmm. he starts talking about mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. he will sometimes just let you know that hey I'm gonna name this baby permission podcast and it now comes to life now you got gonna start seeing the arms and the legs and the face of this thing that I think will really be beautiful not just for y'all one thing that the people at this table are committed to mm -hmm. is not just giving people and serving people but also eating from the buffet that we lay out come on I think that is absolutely imperative and so that's what I want this to be I want you to come in I want you to write um, us about your questions, your thoughts, your takeaways, so that you give us more food for thought to chew on and that we'll be able to come back and serve you even more that is real and relevant to actually where you are. Kind of want to let these beautiful ladies introduce themselves. They are <laughs> very special to me, but I would like to hear how they represent themselves. So Keisha, can you let people know who you are and how you're feeling, where you are, why you feel like you're seated at this table? Oh, Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Right, that last question was <laughs> yeah. good. Okay, so my name is Keisha Young. I am 33. Yeah. And I have known this woman over here mm. since I was 17. That's so crazy. for a long time, we've been doing life in community together. Mm -hmm. Originally from Atlanta, ATL, hey. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm married, have an amazing husband, Dinar. And I think I'm at this table because mm. um, the Lord has purposed this place. Mm. Um, he's allowed us to, to be in fellowship with each other through many of seasons yes. and I think that that is a gift and a treasure and I feel like it's one that um I think more women 
we, we don't walk together. You know, it's mm. like we always hear about cattiness or mm. people falling out Sticky. and stuff like that. So I think um, he's allowing this space to kind of bring light even to that so and good. show how to be able to fellowship with one another, support each other mm -hmm. and do life together, but mm. it not be any comparison or bringing down. And so I think that is a reason why I'm at the marble table. I love the marble, <laughs> marble table. table. <laughs> fancy. Nice yes, table. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> So who are you, Janiya Quarles? Yes, Janiya Quarles. Hi, guys. <laughs> um, I am 25. Uh, I have been doing Life With You Now since 2019. Yeah. <laughs> um, originally from Birmingham, Alabama, moved to Columbia, you know, gave God a yes. And that was going to actually be my answer to, like, why I think I'm sitting at this table right now. It was, like, yes after yes. Before I even knew mm. um, that we would one day be doing this, it was a yes to just, like, okay, I, I feel God calling me to just assist in this area. Mm. I feel God mm. calling me to just, you know, write some devotions or, you know, whatever it was, mm. whatever the yes was for the day. Mm. Um, I think all of those accumulated to where we are right now. Mm. Um, you know, there's like lights and cameras now, but this is really like yeah, your bedroom really floor. Like <laughs> <laughs> this is really like, you know, like our actual, you know, deep diving into like real conversations mm -hmm. that we have over, mm -hmm. you know, day after day. And so, yeah, that's me, single. Mm -hmm. Single. <laughs> very single. Mingle? So. Are you ready to mingle? <laughs> yes, mingle. yes, yes. I would have had a different answer for that um, probably like a month ago, but yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. You know, whatever the Lord wants to do. So. You said something that I want to just touch on before we go deeper. Mm -hmm. You said you felt a call to assist. Mm -hmm. And some people have a hard time with the role of number two. Mm -hmm. I want you mm -hmm. to just speak to every number two or three out there mm -hmm. as to why it's so imperative for, if you just take the permission banner just solo, if there wasn't an assistant or a uh, somebody to pass the ball to a number two, how would it defeat the whole permission banner at large? Uh, the first thing that I think about is like, you know, who's going to do it? Because, mm. you know, there's so many, you know, you see this table you see these cups like somebody had to order these come on here somebody What's had her to name? <laughs> her name's Janaya <laughs> somebody had to order these you know somebody had to put the flowers on the wall somebody had to you know really you say it all the time like incubate mm. or like really like take what we say in meetings or like these dreams or these visions like for you to stay a visionary mm. for you to remain as a leader like somebody has to like take the vision and run mm. and I think you have to be so solid in your relationship with God and understanding because I think that's what makes it so easy for me I tell everybody I got the mm. best job in the world Whoa. I think that's what makes it so easy for me is I'm so I'm so comfortable mm. and committed to the fact that I know God told me that this mm. is what I'm supposed to be doing mm -hmm. right now. And I know that like, it ain't nothing like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, it's really nothing like, you know, just hearing you say, like, I want to do a mentorship program. It's like, what, okay, what steps do we have to take to make that happen? So if I can encourage any number two, first you have to be sure from the Lord yeah. that that's, that's what, that that's what mm -hmm. you're supposed to be doing because there it's not always easy. There are some late... <laughs> Some and late, early. And there are some late nights, <laughs> early mornings. You missing the earring? I think drop <laughs> that on me. It's all good. Um, but yeah, there are some late nights. There's some early mornings. There's some actual hard work that's, um, you know, that comes with it. But because I have that, like, you know, stamp from the Lord, like, no, daughter, like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. You're equipped to do it. So even when it's like, you know, my, I ain't ever did nothing like this before. You know, like, I've never had a job like this before. I'm so comfortable with the fact that, like, no, God told me, like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And so once you have that, mm. any insecurity or mm -hmm. any, you know, feeling of inadequ inadequacy, like, it all goes away mm. because, like, you know, like, the Lord has said, this is my daughter who I'm well pleased, who so I'm good. called to do this in this season. And so that's what makes it, you know, a breeze for me. I love it. I love mm -hmm. it. Um, so we gathered to yes. have a conversation. Yes. Um, this is our first one, y'all. It's something <laughs> special about the first. Mm -hmm. I always uh, firmly believe that. And so um, what are we talking about today? What y'all feeling? What y'all oh, thinking yes. about? <laughs> yeah. So we try to have some type of theme, right, mm -hmm. to come together together for a theme for our table talks. And this one is going to be conference. Mm, it's conference, it's podcast. It's kind of like all things new. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we want to hear from you because 
again, like how she said, people see the lights, cameras, and actions like, oh my God, I want to do that. <laughs> but not understanding <laughs> that with everything new comes greater stretch. Mm-hmm. Sure. And you was a little stretch this morning when you walked in. <laughs> <laughs> when you walked in. Stretched. <laughs> Onesie type of stretch. So yes. can you share just about like what this even just today has okay. looked like for you to mm-hmm. take you behind the scenes uh, <laughs> a little like bit more what, what it takes to pull this yeah, off. Man. Um, this morning started really early. I had to get up at five 30 mm-hmm. because I understood that if you wanted to, you know, the weave did not be greasy. You got to <laughs> wash it, right? <laughs> wash your weave. <laughs> so I got up a little earlier than usual. I usually get up about five 45. I gave myself an extra 15 minute buffer, mm-hmm. getting a shower, still ended up late for prayer and it was okay. <laughs> I made it downstairs a little bit late, but I got up a little bit early to wash the weave got myself together kind of started just thinking about it you know you want these pretty tables but you got to actually have something to say Say. Mm. and I think that's really good like there are people that come and draw to these tables that are going to be hungry and thirsty and you really actually have to have real things to fill them and so Mm -hmm. I think that's a huge thing for me it's a huge responsibility Mm -hmm. not that I own on my own because I think Mm. that that's one of the biggest reasons why I'm not intimidated by tables like this Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to give people stuff that I don't really live in so I think in the same way I show up every day for you as a sister mm-hmm. or you as a mom I am thinking about okay yeah there's gonna be a camera there but it's people just like Keisha's and Janiyah's yeah. that are gonna need to be poured into so I get up I'm praying in the shower I'm worshiping I think I was listening to uh Refiner this morning like just Lord burn away insecurity burn away doubt burn away this idea that I don't have enough mm-hmm. and he's just he's Refiner like if the altar is where you lead me, take me there. I want to go to wherever the Lord is. And so I'm starting there. I go down to prayer. I get into the word because the word is my compass. I know um, how I'm to live life by the word. And so I'm in the word. I'm doing this Bible challenge with this community of women. It's called mm-hmm. Mission World. Mm-hmm. Mission World. World. Yep. <laughs> Plug. Plug. Place of community. <laughs> so many times you're wanting to do life and you see yourself kind of up and down and on roller coasters. You need a place to exist consistently. Mm-hmm. And Permission World is a place like this. It's a platform of freedom over 500 women in there and that's not to overwhelm you it's a place to belong Mm -hmm. it's a place where women are able to share their testimonies find their story but actively be accountable and engage in different challenges to continue this lifestyle of freedom so that's that join us i'm telling you it's a place that you will really be refreshed from and so permission world i'm reading the bible challenge that we're doing we're in mark currently Mm -hmm. um or we will be i don't know when you see this i don't know essentially (laughs) in permission world they are doing mark right now so i was reading mark's uh i think mark nine today for myself um well it was really good for me i get from there to the kids gonna get up Mm, mm, y'all i got three three boys a whole church a husband he not feeling good this morning so i'm like all right i ain't gonna get no help with the kids (laughs) so that's a curveball and you have to be able to like to navigate that Mm -hmm. i didn't expect it but i'm like all right god like i got this i gotta get weave done bobbled in (laughs) Mm -hmm. gotta get clothes in the bag Mm -hmm. get makeup done makeup is 30 minutes (laughs) minutes okay (laughs) so i was starting to say i I was like okay it's almost 7 45 i gotta get kids up get them up they take so long oh yeah Mm -hmm. they take so long to get out of bed to get it like they don't want to brush their teeth who takes the longest it takes the longest for Josh, Josh. to wake up. The middle child, my middle boy, I call him Poppy. Poppy want to leave his breath stained. He don't want to, like, he's like, Mommy, can I get Tim up? You can't get Tim No, up. Go to bed <laughs> earlier because I want to talk all night long. So I actually, although they have bunk beds, I have to separate them on weekdays. That's a whole nother story. Like, y'all, you don't even understand all that you have to think about to just get to the next day. Yeah. I am, I had a late meeting just trying to make sure that strategy-wise, mm-hmm. what we're building content for mm-hmm. makes sense. And so I had a late meeting, which got done to bed late i'm starting to prepare i gotta pull out clothes for the day mm-hmm. y'all my kids used to do school at home and we had the right idea to move their school to mm-hmm. the church so that we could see them while we work sounds good but isn't always good <laughs> as it pertains to how it stretches so i gotta lay out clothes i gotta make sure they actually had a bath that night sometimes we just did a wash off <laughs> and they stayed at home and they pull whatever clothes they pulled they out boys. of their drawer <laughs> yeah it's not like that no more because they got to be presentable because the whole staff going to see them. You know, <laughs> it's a reflection of you. You know, mm. all of that. So, y'all, long story short, they have worked my nerves by the time we got into the car. Can y'all just be quiet? I used to listen to podcasts on the way to work. You nope. can't do none of that on the way because Judah is like, Mommy, I can't hear the video. Like, he's so privileged. Like, every kid don't even have a TV in the car to hear the video. Like, boy, if I turn off the video, chill. Neither here nor there. We get them in the church. 
mind you, I still got baking powder on my face. Yes, I got you a did. Yes, you onesie did. on. Yes, you did. And I look in the room we're supposed to do the podcast in, and they got a strip of flowers. Like, <laughs> you see beautiful flowers. I saw a strip of flowers. I'm like, mm. where is my creative director? What <laughs> happened? Denar, what please. Happened? Right. By the way, the creative director is her husband. Right. So, so I got to look, All I got to work that line of sis going to come in a little fancy because it's her man. You know, <laughs> like, let me say it in a way that's polite because he's son and creative director. It's all these dynamics that you got to work through. Like, okay, PJ, how do you say this as a visionary and a mom? Like, mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to say, I'm not sure if this is the look I'm going for because <laughs> I'm not trying to hurt feelings. And he gave his best and they stayed up here a long time. So you got to have gratitude and be willing to express truth. Mm -hmm. That's a good, that's a PJ tip. It's mm -hmm. a PJ Bow. tip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love Bow. that. PJ <laughs> tips. You're going to hear it all sprinkled in. Yeah, so we drop it in, get kids to get get him to their classroom. I come back. I'm like, all right, Denar, what we gonna do? He come in. He makes this beautiful look. Yeah, it worked cute. out. You Very know, cute. and so I think that was even a lesson learned for us. We've learned how to work through the dynamic of this is not exactly what I was going for, but it not be like a, an indictment against your person. Mm -hmm. You know, that can get real. Very. Really mm -hmm. real. So, Very. That's a whole nother side Right, I'm note. like, that's so big in our culture, but we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I get dressed. I go to the back. I turn on refiner some more because I, he, I'm still needing to be refined. Lord, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. like, oh, I didn't bring you Starbucks. Oh, yeah. I had to look at assistant <laughs> who ain't assisting. Uh, she got her Starbucks in the room. And she had Starbucks, it. too. I did, but she, she didn't but, get but see, yeah. <laughs> see, see, responsibility. You see though. how she tried to throw me under the bus? <laughs> see? And they'll do that. They'll try to run you over. Neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I was like, sis, like, can you get me my order from yesterday? Like, can you think about me when you think about yourself? Like, you number two, right? Like, that means you have to include number one in your thoughts. Um, I don't and get she it right had it, like, on that. Because she used to have a real hard time Ooh, on it. Like, hard. when she missed. Mm -hmm. You know, we could just go down a lot of roads. Right, right. So, like, I'm trying to stay focused. Um, but a essentially it took a lot to get here in a new moment and still say god i still got enough i know mm -hmm. it's thursday i know i had this brand new way of life with the boys taking up a lot of real estate that i didn't used to have them take up um but i still believe that if i lean on you and i depend on you your grace will be enough mm -hmm. and i just want to say that to the mama that's out there getting it you mm -hmm. single you're working that job you're giving your best and there are going to be moments that he's calling you to something new mm -hmm. and you're going to have to rely and depend on him mm -hmm. to have it when you don't feel like you do it re-energized me to lay the weight down to say that this new podcast god if this is what you want i'm gonna hand it to you mm -hmm. and i'm gonna let you do it through me not try to do it myself so mm -hmm. that's my spiel mm -hmm. on newness mm -hmm. hey man that was yeah. good it was Yes, I think the the newest thing for us, like you know, corporately, twenty twenty two, was permission conference. Ooh, yeah, my goodness, it was a thing. <laughs> what, what was like y'all favorite moments? Ooh. Like, let's just start there because it was a full what three day six events mm -hmm. yes, type yes. of situation. I'm talking about morning to night. Mm -hmm. We spent, <laughs> I mean, hours at this church yes. on end. Like, what was y'all's like favorite moments? Mm. Um, for me, it was two. Okay. One is front facing, one was behind the scenes. So okay. the okay. front facing one was we were um, doing panel and I was helping with hosting. Mm -hmm. Me and Lauren. Hey, Lauren. <laughs> um, so we were um, hosting and bringing out questions, but the panel turned. Mm -hmm. It turned. Yeah. And Turned. they ended up, we were doing like a prophetic flow moment for people who are expecting or believing the Lord for um, a child. And I remember a time when I would be so focused on like working mm. that I would not have like, I Stopped. put that mic down because mm. it's like, y'all, we not, we not about to come out here and ask no more questions. <laughs> and I went to the altar and was able to just really worship. So just the ability to take in the moment, mm -hmm. we've been talking about that. Well, like we were able to really be in it, not just help produce it, so but good. take it in. And then my second moment was um, Friday before it kind of kicked off. I like it was some busy nights. We're going to yeah. get into planning in a second, but it was like long nights. I was at my end. I had eight all day oh just because we were moving. Mm. And I ended up in a back room. Like one of our volunteers was so this sweet. really happened, yeah, right? One of our volunteers, she was like, girl, have you ate? And I'm like, no. So she said, here, take a chicken wing. I grabbed the chicken wing. Started crying. I go into a back room and I literally, I sat there and I just cried. Aww. I cried into the chicken wing, but it was. <laughs> into the chicken wing. Into the chicken wing. It was, but it was such a pivotal moment for me because I had reached my end. Mm. And it was one of the first times that I invited the Lord into a place of where 
I was like, Lord, I don't have it. Mm. I like, we have poor, you know, and mm-hmm. it's like, I'm, uh, it's about to, and it's just about to kick off mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And, but seeing that he sent someone to yeah. feed me a chicken wing. <laughs> and you had a two, three, five yes. loans moment. I was like, he sent the Ravens. The Ravens, yeah. drop it. <laughs> drop off a chicken wing for me. It was such an intimate and beautiful moment mm-hmm. with the Lord in this chicken wing in the back room before it all kicked off mm-hmm. being like, I got you. Like I will pour I got back. It. I will mm. pour back. I got it. When you don't have it, Keisha, mm. I'm gonna lift you up, mm. and Grace along is gonna carry you. Mm. Which is that really was the only way I would want of it to be at the end of the Come day. On, man. Yeah. That that it wasn't in my own strength or like mm. we did this. I know for sure. Yeah, the Lord Himself. Yes, put yeah. on he that car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he showed up through that conference. So those are my two favorite moments. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. PJ, I feel like this, and even when we were kind of talking about it loosely before we started. I don't think that I could give one moment mm. because he was so big in every moment. Mm. Uh, there was a pastor, Pastor Ty Tribute. I'm sure many of y'all know him. He had come to our church prior to Permission Conference started, and he asked me, what are you looking forward to most with conference? And I was like, honestly, I am so excited that I really believe God now. Like, mm. I believe that God is going to do God mm-hmm. in this conference. And I feel like as I step back from every moment, whether it was a moment where we were crowning people, whether it was a moment where there were incredible uh, prophetic voices singing, Naomi Rain, you got Sarah Jates bringing the fire, mm-hmm. you got Tasha Cobbs. Every time I stood back, I saw the sovereignty and the bigness of Come God, on. something mm-hmm. that no man could take credit for mm-hmm. in every moment. There were moments that I stood in session too where I was like could we go higher and he was like absolutely I have more Mm. Mm. I think for me I was astounded there was that is the only word that I could give to conference at large when I pull back and I look at the whole picture Mm -hmm. I was just I was literally amazed like Mm. God I can give you something so small as a yes. Mm -hmm. And you could take just a small yes of me saying, daddy, I'll go even if I go afraid. I'll go even if I feel inadequate. And you will become adequacy for Mm -hmm. me. You will become enough for me. Like, I think that is the true undercurrent of conference at large. He's enough. Mm -hmm. No matter if if it's in your marriage, if it's a conference, I don't care and if, if if it's infertility or mm-hmm. whatever mm-hmm. your thing is, he is not just enough. He was more than enough in every single session of that conference, sure. and yeah. he poured himself out, and it was mm-hmm. enough for me. I think so often, and I can tell you this for sure, I have labored and tried in my own strength, tried to cross every T, dot every I, and it didn't come close yeah. to mm. what he would do when I let go. Mm. It did not even come close. I can't even tell you how many times when we tried to do things like we had, and I think that's the thing that people don't realize. There's always a pre before you see, yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like before you see permission conference, although this was our first one, there was a thing called exhale. And I know mm-hmm. I got some day ones watching like <laughs> Shout out. before there was a permission banner. There was an exhale that literally, I mean, we were just giving him our best. Mm-hmm. It started December 2016. So mm-hmm. long before people were seeing me give my yes on bigger platforms, I was giving my yes in dark rooms where mm-hmm. it was badly lit. It was uh, <laughs> we balloon were arches. People, yeah, balloon <laughs> arches. We were giving people really small little sub sandwiches. Mm-hmm. She actually was a Ooh. partaker back then. Ooh. And she called her grandmama talking about how we didn't give her enough food. So <gasps> you want you want to share? Yeah. <laughs> I love I, I was just just literally just sharing this story so this was at the top of 2019 mm-hmm. just before i gave god a yes to mm-hmm. come alongside i was very 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 new to the church i had probably been to f4 city probably around three months okay. at the time um and so i came to excel conference <laughs> and i remember walking in and there were no chairs because i, I didn't know that it was kind of like a lay back you didn't know my style yeah i didn't know the <laughs> i didn't know the vibe and so i walk in it was no chairs it was like sitting on the ground and then it was like an all-day thing and so that it was like on the um schedule it was like time for lunch <laughs> so i was like okay perfect so i like walk because <laughs> i do food yes so i walk out to the lobby and there i have a picture so i'm hoping we can like insert yeah. oh that would be great <laughs> <laughs> this would be good uh, i have a picture of the lunch that was served it was like um you know how subway you can get like a six inch it was, <laughs> it was a, public it was a oh it was public it was so, public. i'm so sorry it was a two inch though yes it was like a two inch sandwich and then like a bag of chips and for anybody who knows me i don't do chips oh, so yeah, i really doesn't like crunchy yeah i don't like crunchy foods mm-hmm. <laughs> so the the between the little sandwich and then the chips 
You had nothing to eat. I was hungry. <laughs> like I was really, really hungry. I was, and I remember I took the picture of mm. it, and then I got home that night. I called my grandma. <laughs> I was like, Grandma, like I can't you believe this? Da 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 da. And I rem- as I was complaining, mm. I promise. I don't even know if I ever told you this. Mm. As I was complaining, God said, "Don't worry, you're gonna plan the next one." Whoa! And I was like, it was. It kind of went in like one ear and not the other. And you know, we still. That was like January of 20, 2019. We didn't get. I didn't even know you until probably like August. August. Mm-hmm. I didn't come on as your assistant till like October. Yeah. So, but it, it was really like a manifestation of God, like really showing His word to me. Like I said that to you, and I didn't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. Like I tell any anybody, mm-hmm. like it wasn't like a like, oh, Pastor Jackie, God told I'm me. Get in here. I'm, I'm in this my spot <laughs> like you know it was none of that mm. it was just like I heard he God he did what he did so funny story but yeah <laughs> and I think it was Go funny ahead. because um <laughs> after after playing it now, I think mm-hmm. Janaya understands. Oh, yeah, most sure. people don't realize mm-hmm. all of the planning, all, all goes that goes into it. Into so many it. They just think, oh, I purchased a ticket and that's it. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we should be able to afford this and we should do this. It's like there are so many expenses mm-hmm. from creative to logistics mm-hmm. to peripherals. Mm-hmm. Yes. Per- peripherals. Peripherals. <laughs> peripherals. Okay, you oh, can't peripherals can cost money. Oh, yeah. Those are your Real lanyards coins. and mm-hmm. all of that. Oh, and, stuff. and we want to make sure it's it's branded lanyards because all of that all yeah of that. so it was just mm. funny yeah now, we laughed funny. about that several mm-hmm. times during the planning <laughs> oh, process yeah. it's so different when you're on the other side mm-hmm. of it and i just want to say this to every woman watching because there are many women that won't start because they're afraid of hearing stories like that mm-hmm. they're afraid of the critique they're afraid of giving their best and it not being good enough for some people in a moment mm-hmm. if you don't give something mm-hmm. they'll never have anything to critique mm-hmm. so you could have a moment where everybody thinks the, the best of you but they have a counterfeit or a limited version of who you are because you mm. never gave them anything to critique but what I can tell you is this that critique led to Permission Conference mm. 2022 mm-hmm. it led to us doing things better than we, when we would have ever been able to do them because we were willing to be laughed at we were willing to give somebody something to say like oh this was good but this was bad and you can make it better mm-hmm. that has been the story and the journey of Permission mm-hmm. for me to be free enough to actually live out whatever is in my heart mm-hmm. knowing that there will be mm-hmm. things that you will grow in and become better at I know I know Mm -hmm. I know (laughs) two years ago there's no way I could do this podcast this comfortable oh yeah Mm -hmm. I used to have a hard time just with uh I felt like when I got on camera it was faking I couldn't even like die a lot like this but it's taking reps and being comfortable shaking and getting it wrong or speaking fast to get comfortable enough to find my actual normal of living in freedom and so I just think it's a word for any woman just start Mm -hmm. it's gonna be some critiques but the critiques makes you better Mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be the thing that makes you hesitate you can boldly embrace the critique and go forward Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love it yep me too so i know a lot of people are like asking now that we're like past conference we've been through it everybody experienced it had these amazing experiences Mm -hmm. like people want to know what was like the secret sauce like what Mm. was the and uh, you know we prayed (laughs) and we fasted and we did all those things like what would you say though was the secret sauce behind permission permission conference um, I have this thing. Uh, it's a concept, and many of the people that follow me already are aware of it. Um, it's this thing called only obedience. Mm. And for those that don't know, only obedience is this concept where the father will give you instructions, and he'll tell you, do this, ask Sarah, ask Naomi, mm. ask Katie Oriah, mm. ask uh, who I'm missing, Tasha, <laughs> um, ask Travis. But he doesn't say, don't ask this person. And your ability to be okay and say, like, well, well, this name isn't as big as this name. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, God, okay, you also, you said these names, but where do you want them placed? Mm-hmm. Inside of obedience and only obedience, it's not just who you said, but where and how you mm-hmm. want it said. And so there is this concept of an obedience that leads to another obedience. Mm-hmm. You have to continue to follow this trail of obedience where you're saying, okay, God, you said here, you said now, you said this date, you said that. And excluding the noise of, well, I think that if I don't do this or or what if they think or what if they see that's outside of only obedience. Mm. God is not asking for things outside of the thing that he said. Many times we error in 
oh, I'm not sure if they're going to think or if this is enough or, well, what if I don't? Then yeah. And everybody else conference is like this. Mm -hmm. It causes you to be counterfeit, limit yourself from the father being able to do absolutely everything he mm -hmm. wants to do because you're chasing voices and words that he never said. Inside of obedience, inside of only obedience mm -hmm. is freedom, is provision. It's not running out mm -hmm. because we sometimes get overwhelmed at trying to do the thing he never said to do. He didn't say do that in my Miami. Mm -hmm. And I could just say, well, say doing it in my own hometown is not enough. Like doing it at our own church. Like, is that big enough? Oh, it was big enough for God because yeah, he <laughs> shut this thing down because mm -hmm. inside of obedience is protection, is provision, it's favor, mm -hmm. it's oil, it's provision. Yeah. Like it's everything you need. Mm -hmm. And I believe so many women, not just with conferences, but with marriage, with children, with singleness are wearing themselves out because they feel like in order to get a man, you got to put your titties out on social media. Mm -hmm. Like they feel feel like you got to drop it like it's hot he never said do that mm -hmm. and but what he did say do he might say take care of your body and watch what you eat Ooh. he may say go your high in the church mm -hmm. like he might be saying something specific to you that would lead to the exact place that your man is found mm -hmm. but you mm -hmm. already have constructed in your mind that culture says you have to do it like this and you missing your man and he can't find you because mm -hmm. you don't look like what the father said because mm -hmm. you don't live inside of only obedience Jesus. And so I'm just saying for even the, the visionaries out there that are looking like, oh, she did this specific thing. Yeah, I did a specific thing. It's called only obedience. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. When he asked me to fast, I fast. And I didn't fast when he told me not to. It's good, mom. And see, mm -hmm. I think so often we think it's such a spiritual thing. Like, it ain't always spiritual. There were times God told me, like, I don't... I, so like we think sometimes like the only way he'll show up is if I fast. He told me, baby, I want you to fast, but I'm not going to show up because you fast. Ooh. Like I'm not doing this because you do that. I'm doing what I do because I'm faithful. Mm, yeah. And so many times we believe that his, his ability to show up in presence is because of our performance. Mm. That is slavery. Yeah. Mm. That yeah. is not daughterhood. Cause I'm going to tell you this. There's nothing my children have that I won't show up for mm. without mm -hmm. them doing a thing. Mm. If they're there, I'm there. And that's, that's the thing that I think we get wrong so often. If you show up, he's showing up because I'm royalty. Mm -hmm. I'm daughter. And he wants to do his best to show up through me. And I think that we count ourselves out or we perform like clowns rather than reign like daughters because we don't recognize yes. that God is just God. And when we have God, we have daughterhood. We have safety. We have provision. We have protection. I'm telling every woman, no matter what the call is, live inside of only mm -hmm. obedience. Stop wearing yourself out. Mm -hmm. I did it too long. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I did it too long. And you challenged everybody that. on the team. Mm -hmm. it, it, from good. like the creative aspect to logistics, mm -hmm. like all of that stuff. It was like, we had to individually pray. Like it wasn't Check just, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, why are you doing that? Yeah, mm -hmm. like it was, you know, motives, all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you just didn't leave it at like, oh, I'm the leader. Like everybody who has a part to play in this, mm -hmm. like we're going to all have only obedience. And that was like super key for us. Through that I love time. that you brought that up and I'll tell you why. Because sometimes people think that you can resurrect things that you weren't living prior. Mm -hmm. Like you think that it's like only obedience is just going to show up at permission conference, but you don't live only obedience on Wednesday. Mm. Like we lived only obedience when it was just dig deep, mm, when yeah. it was just, mm -hmm. just us three before mm -hmm. we had somebody to pour into. We've lived only obedience in so many other, I don't know if many of y'all remember these morning motivations. They're still on yeah. YouTube. They're not the best, <laughs> but I'm okay because it taught me only obedience. I had people that are sitting in this room right now that are producing even this, that get to see me live in another level of, of confidence because mm. they challenged me when I wasn't confident that Jackie what you have to give is okay and if you go shaking it'll bless somebody and the more you give it he'll perfect it and mm -hmm. I'm just saying that to mm -hmm. say don't try to resurrect obedience or only obedience in a moment where it is pivotal mm -hmm. if you're not living it in what you eat what you wear when you go to bed when you do it and how you show it for your family you have to use and work that muscle mm -hmm. for him for God to be able to use it in a time that's pivotal mm -hmm. so yeah mm -hmm. absolutely what you got Keith um I want to talk about the moments leading up to conference. Okay. Because I know you talk about being like a brave girl yeah, and yeah, jumping yeah. out there, but there was a really special moment that happened. So if you were at conference, you saw some of the um, the intro videos yeah. and the commercials and the trailers. About, the trailers was royalty. But um, that, was, that was something big because it wasn't just shot in our backyard. Come on. It <laughs> took a whole production to put on. Mm. But can you... Um, bring them into that moment mm -hmm. that I believe
believe help to mm. uh, free you mm-hmm. and just push you to this mm. bigger space of like really stepping into a mm. next level of like, mm. like, mm. yeah, this mm-hmm. is, this is who I am and owning that space mm. and all like of that. a key turn. Mm-hmm. Like it was something. It makes me almost want to cry because it's so real. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what happens when you are brave enough to be vulnerable. Mm. It brings out the best of you. Like mm-hmm. I think sometimes when we're brought to tears, we think that that's weakness. It's strength. Mm-hmm. It's strength to be vulnerable enough to say I was scared. Right. Mm-hmm. This girl wrote me the other day and she was like, Dr. Jackie, I did a thing and I was bold like you are when you're on stage. And I was laughing to myself mm-hmm. because they don't understand that even in moments where I'm able to be brave on stage, I have moments where, we're having to do all of this promo stuff. So to Keisha's question, we decided that we wanted to go to a castle because <laughs> we wanted to go all the way with this idea of royalty. And my creative director is so brilliant. He sees, I mean, these larger than life things. This is her husband, by the way. <laughs> oh, he sees these larger than life things that cost a lot of money. <laughs> they cost coins that I've like at levels that I've never spent before. And if I'm honest, I had a conversation probably more, more times than not. I had one really recently with Janiyah where I was telling her, I have a hard time because of the way my marriage has been constructed and that my husband is a celebrity. He's the one that's about lights, camera, action. He's the one that gets on stages and have to have all eyes on him. I'm not really used to being that way. And I don't, I don't even need it. Like mm. I am very much so very comfortable in the background. Like I'll say my two, I will put my hands on that man and pray and send him forward and be asked fulfilled in that moment. And so I have a internal war sometimes mm. when it's this idea that Denar is saying like, no mom, like we're going to go all the way to New Jersey and you're going to invite these women that you've invited into a space called permission world to come and be a part of this Royal court. And it just feels so big. It feels mm-hmm. so mighty. Like it was like the weight of that was like, okay, not just the coins because y'all, it was several thousands. <laughs> Let me just say that. <laughs> really? like, and if this doesn't go well, or we don't give our heart to really steward in this well, it's going to be a lot of money wasted. And I'm really big about stewardship mm-hmm. and not wanting to waste, you know, money. And we get there and he's asking me questions like, mom, like, are we going to do this? He has to give these people at the castle a final say if we're going to go. And God is so sovereign mm-hmm. in how he will force us beyond where we are. Cause I'm telling y'all, like, I don't really like the whole light camera action. We're going to travel all the way to Jersey. That means we're going to take buses and SUVs and people going to do all this for me. A little too much for me, a little too mighty for me. And God is like, you're going to do this. Mm-hmm. And the moment where I had to give Denard an answer about going to New Jersey, one of, I would say two of the major voices that kind of championed and pushed me like, girl, come out your nest and fly is my husband. And this guy named Pastor Matt. Y'all are here. I talked about him in conference. Mm-hmm. He's like those two really, they kind of like thorns in my side, always <laughs> pressing on <laughs> like, girl, you still, you a bad girl. I know you call everybody else bad, but let me remind you, you mm-hmm. bold anointed and destined to win too. Like you can do more than you've done. And they were both tied up when I had to give this final yes about if I was going to go to conference and God had already been on me about like, you go to everybody else before you come to me. Mm-hmm. Do you want to see what I have to say about New Jersey? Like Ooh. I know that they were given by me and they're not bad, but if you make a good thing bad by overusing it, mm-hmm. it can be bad too. Mm-hmm. Um, good, I was sitting on that bed key mm-hmm. and I was like, Jesus PT don't play about money being wasted. (laughs) And if I get out here and I don't do good, I was going to feel like a failure. And my husband is hard on me. Like, although he is a coach and he's a champion, the man of God expects excellence. Mm -hmm. And I don't say that in a bad way. It's good because he calls me up and he challenges me to give my very best in anything Mm -hmm. that I do. But I had all that weight sitting Mm -hmm. on my shoulder. Like, is T going to think this is okay? Is this a good idea? Matt, he's so strategic. He's thinking like, and I was just like, you know what, God, what do you say about this? Mm -hmm. And God said, I think think you need to be brave enough to fly Mm. I think you need to be brave enough to finally take the leap Mm. and I did Mm -hmm. I jumped out of that boat and when I tell you Mm -hmm. it was one of the most profound moments even beyond what you could capture in a video Mm -hmm. there was such beautiful so it was the moment was just so beautiful because Mm. it was it was faith in action Mm. it was faith on display it was this whole idea of me talking about free people free people in real life not me just talking about it but living it it was huge for Mm -hmm. me they're like I'm gonna go for it Mm -hmm. and I ain't gonna be afraid to go for it and I think to Keisha's point it unlocked the dam Mm -hmm. of more and more like I'm gonna go for it in every Mm -hmm. aspect of every aspect of conference Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
That is incredible. And I'm thinking too, like most of the girls in that video, that was your first time meeting them. Literally. Like it's it's so many details. So many layers. Like you were sick too. I was, ooh, oh yeah. I was bad sick. Bad back sick. I had gone to the emergency room. They had to give me IVs. I didn't think that I was gonna make it. And the enemy's really, really strategic about that. There are moments where he will try to punk you out through hell, through you know, just intimidation. I had to grind in and say, like, no, I didn't gave this yes, and I'm gonna keep this yes. And even mm. if I have to allow the Lord to empower me, and yes, taking my health into account, but like team, I'm gonna give my best to show up. Mm -hmm. And it was like up until the hours we right before mm -hmm. my team was on standby, just like, are we gonna be able to pull this off? Even in a moment of feeling weak, having to look back to the Lord and say, Daddy, you promised, like, mm -hmm. can you heal me also? Mm -hmm. Not just help me give a yes, but can you heal me in the middle of it? And he did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was really sweet. Mm -hmm. It was. Um, I want to dig into um, your glam squad. Oh, oh man. Yeah. Glam squad. So at yeah. conference, y'all probably seen some fire outfits, right? Fire. Like, I mean, fire. Literally. Yeah. Set on fire. <laughs> um, but what people don't know is that, like, those people have been rocking with you for years. Mm -hmm. Literally. Right. Mm -hmm. So for years and years, but one core element of what I love about you mm -hmm. is that the people who surround you is not just for like a role or a task, mm -hmm. but it's a real level of discipleship mm -hmm. that sure. happens. And mm -hmm. that goes from if you if you're gonna do my hair, my neck, like <laughs> whatever, matter. watch the yes. babies, it's gonna be discipleship. And I think there was so much beauty even behind the scenes. So we're trying mm -hmm. to bring y'all behind the yeah, scenes. Yeah, yeah. That was happening during the weekend, mm -hmm. even all off the stage with like the glam squad and the team so can you kind of open up share a little bit about um your relationship with them and then but also like that important part mm -hmm. of the discipleship so i love um that the lord does everything on purpose yeah mm -hmm. even in 2016 when we're starting the church we're at this small well we're at a college and we're starting out small just giving them our mondays these monday months of worship kind of thing and there's this little girl um and she basically gets the courage to come up to me her name is shaquante spencer she goes by style by salia b and she's been she was like the lord kind of prompted her mm -hmm. long before we we're on platforms i mean pt had a platform my pt i call pastor travis which is my husband all that just Want to make sure y'all are on the same page and tracking <laughs> with me. Um, she's like, hey, do you mind if I try out styling you? Now, mind you, she's actually never styled before, mm. but she feels this unction that she wants to use something that she feels the Lord has placed in her. Long, I mean, long story short, from the very first um, moment we ever had our first service up until today, she's the same girl that has been styling me. And through her growth and through her trying stuff that she's never tried before, mm -hmm. when I was big pregnant in 2016, up until the permission conference, this girl has been honing this talent mm -hmm. and, and understanding her assignment, mm -hmm. leveling up. I mean, she's been doing engaged cultures, getting better, studying. And she, mm -hmm. I mean, like, it's you just been seeing so much growth, but that shows up in Keisha's, who was there mm -hmm. at the beginning. She was at exhales running quarterback before I had a Janiyah when it was just like you and Crystal Myers at the time like it was small teams that were giving you know the best of their gifts to continue to get better but the beautiful thing about that is behind the scenes like you have a Christy Quaterbaum who does my makeup mm -hmm. and her husband who does my hair I'm back there and um one I would just say that Christy was dealing with the health health issue and she wanted to be healed from it and she had just kind of brought up like that she didn't want to have to take medicine for it anymore or anything like that and I just told her in this moment like as we were we were in New Jersey and we're preparing mm -hmm. to get ready to go out to do ministry to do this trailer let me help you understand that ministry is in every room it's not mm -hmm. just on platforms yeah. like we're gonna stop right now and we're gonna pray for you to be fully healed from this and it's important for me to say ministry is not just on platforms it's in every room that you go mm -hmm. in and so I mean I'm pouring into them reminding them who they are like that you don't back down that we can be healed in rooms like this even before we go out and lay hands on masses I think that you do a disservice to people that you're in closed doors with yeah. to show up and be something that you're not in rooms with mm -hmm. them alone. Good, like Ma. if I'm not really a real sister to you that says, no, Keisha, there's more in you, which mm -hmm. we've been talking about a lot this yeah. month. Like, no, ma'am, like there's more, like you're going to give more, like the father sees greater in you and there's a damn that's going to break. Like I do you a disservice to go minister to thousands and ask you to stand beside me mm -hmm. and do that for thousands that I won't do for you first. Like that'll never be our story. Mm -hmm. When you lock arms with me, when you lock arms with me, 
it'll always be because I did it with uh, with you all first. Mm -hmm. And I think that is why people buy in and serve so richly mm -hmm. for people that would do that. If I don't see y'all, I don't have the right or the honor to see someone else. Mm -hmm. Like if I overlook what's been most preciously given to me, the father should never trust me with something more than that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where many are missing it. They're waiting to get to the masses, but they're missing the one. Woo! They're waiting to get to these platforms, but they're not using their apartment complex. They're not using the job man. that they've been praying for. They're mm -hmm. not using the marriage that they asked to have. I'm telling you, every place he allows me to show up, when I walked off those stages, even at permission conferences, we were having rooms yes. where people yes. were being laid out and being reminded, no daughter, you are daughter of this house. You matter, and you are gonna forever hear me say, I love you, you, and you're necessary, your voice, and that's what this table is all about. Mm -hmm. Not only will you hear my voice, but you will hear the voice of those that the Father has brought alongside me because the truth is I don't just have something to say these girls right here they mm -hmm. are locked and loaded and the, and the proof of you being a good leader is that everybody that follows you carries the same weight of what you carry mm -hmm. I tell you this if you can only listen to the one that's at the top they really are not leading you very well Whoa. if you can't find the offspring or the fruit of what they give out Whoa. and still bite and taste nourishment they're not leading well because real fruit, fruit produce real fruit. Mm. And that's just what I firmly believe. That's what real discipleship is. It's not just I'm setting myself on fire and watch, you watching me burn. It's mm. me lighting the fire in you that would cause someone else to have a fire lit in them. And I believe that in every room I go in and every team I have, you're going to see that. Mm -hmm. Like, I guarantee you without question, if I call my cameraman, if I call my nail girl, if I call my assistant, I could have them go out from me and they the, any person that experienced them would get the same fire mm -hmm. that for me is the true essence of who Jesus was and it was his model mm. and it's my responsibility and I don't take it lightly and y'all know yeah I do not take that thing for granted like I'm gonna challenge you up mm. every day and that's real ministry yeah yeah mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that's the heart of it and it's like I don't want to say what are we doing this for what if, are we doing what are we for? doing this for <laughs> if people ain't really changing, changing. Like, yep. yes this is good and this is cute but it's like but unless lives are actually changing Woo! they feel mm -hmm. real love they know that I can start in one place and never, never. had no experience mm. and somebody will believe in me Woo! and stick with me and I'll be open to hear critique Come and on. you know and I don't and take it personal yes, and all of that stuff like that's real ministry. That's how we grow. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think you talked about something so important, which is the fruit mm -hmm. of like everything. Like, cause it's not about just these like big moments. It's about you stewarding your 6 a.m. time yeah. and like all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And I think one of the most special moments was after the panel. Mm -hmm. And we kind of like had this flow prophetic moment that for many it's like, just happened <laughs> but mm -hmm. God had already given you a sneak peek he to did. say like hey I'm gonna make this moment happen mm -hmm. and really it happened after every session to be <laughs> to be completely honest, honest. it happened after mm -hmm. every session but we kind of like already knew that was something that God had already revealed to you in mm -hmm. prayer that that moment would happen and we had tried to schedule it in yeah. like we had reworked <laughs> I mean so many people were asking like where's the conference schedule we're like we still praying about it. <laughs> I love we're it. still waiting on the Lord yeah, to you yeah, know yeah. download mm -hmm. what things gonna look like and so we had tried to like put it like okay we're gonna do this this and then that's when that moment is gonna happen and da 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 but it ended up happening after the panel right it ended up happening mm -hmm. after I want you to talk about that moment mm -hmm. a little bit and like how God kind of like led us there even mm -hmm. like you know prior to conference and then in the moment what it felt like my husband says something all the time that I feel like it's so fitting for your question he says if you see it for the first time in a natural you're, you're late, late. Mm -hmm. and I think that that was such a proof like I think as you steward your time of getting with the Lord you ask about secret sauce I think earlier like the secret sauce is creating space mm. to actually go before the Lord to kind of like okay daddy you said conference but continue to obey in mm -hmm. going back like what is this going to look like what do you want it to like how do you want this to flow and he kept telling me like at the conference I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to do something but like you were rationalize okay God like at the panel that's like the moment it's going to be chill and mm -hmm. we're not going to really go Eat there lunch. he's like he's <laughs> like oh yeah like mm -hmm. says who who told you that mm -hmm. and I think we have to start confronting all these things that we've said it can't happen like that as we do our best to steward and try to make a plan and make a schedule being so open to the things that he 
showed us in visions and say like I just sense that he's gonna do something like this and we're not gonna force it because yeah. I hate mm-hmm. things that are contrived and you have mm-hmm. forced it to be a win it's not win if you make it happen like mm-hmm. you want God win right mm-hmm. um we didn't force it but we were open mm-hmm. and I think that's the true mm-hmm. testament of belief and true testament of trust like I can trust my friend Jesus mm-hmm. I can believe and allow him to hand in hand walk with me like as we're going he told me as I was doing panel save her for last mm-hmm. so yep. as we were in the middle of it I'm not just in panel like okay he said new panel my ears are still open, open. in the middle That's of good. it and he's like her next do that like I'm still mm-hmm. as a door to listen and daddy lead me what are you saying and when he was like save her for last I didn't know exactly why I just obeyed mm-hmm. and sometimes you won't know but as you obey as I said rivers flow from obedience mm-hmm. he took that thing about infertility and mm-hmm. he picked that room upside down <laughs> and he blessed it and he broke it and he multiplied it and harvest mm-hmm. has happened as a result can I just say this I believe that there are going to be so many permission babies next year Amen. like by this time next year I really believe that that moment was not just a hype moment I believe to Pastor Keisha's point Mm -hmm. real ministry brings about real change and real fruit and there were some wounds that were closed that I really believe with all my heart will be open and I will continue to believe it as Mm -hmm. if it was the first time I ever believed it that Mm -hmm. God is going to do what he promised I believe that every woman he made a promise that they would carry a baby including this one Mm -hmm. that there will be a baby that will happen I believe Mm -hmm. that with all my heart Mm -hmm. I do I firmly believe it and it's something about when radical women get to believe together (laughs) something unified together he declares it we're two or more together in his name concerning anything anything Anything. can you process that Mm. like concerning fibroids Mm polyps mm. concerning uh endometriosis concerning sperm counts being low like anything is included in all of that mm. he can take whatever he want to and do whatever he want to and i pray that every woman out there hear me when i say that he can take anything if you believe if you believe like you don't have to force anything on you you can just believe and believe that the god that can create anything can do it i believe that's what that moment was like Mm -hmm. women in transparency and humility said daddy i'm coming to this altar if the Mm altar is where you lead Mm -hmm. us take me there like Mm -hmm. and on the altar of transparency and vulnerability there's a mighty god that shows up and does some made away type of stuff Mm -hmm. (laughs) not telling you something i heard about like he showed up in moments where i was laying in the hospital bed and he did things that doctors that practice medicine said he couldn't. And he says, I don't practice. I'm a great physician. And I do what I want. I do what I want. So Mm. often we believe the voice of people that are practicing and questioning when there's a God that knows for sure that I do what I want Mm. to. And we don't believe his voice. I say this all the time, and I pray every woman out there that hears me, hears this. If you're going to doubt something, doubt your doubts. Don't doubt a God that is sure. Mm-hmm. Doubt your doubts. Doubt the stuff that these doctors have said. Because they practicing. I'm a doctor. And I done practiced. <laughs> done messed up a couple things. <laughs> I'm telling you, at our best attempt, we're doing our best job mm-hmm. to practice. That's mm-hmm. it. But continue to give it to a great physician. He do what he do. He do a good job at what he does. Mm-hmm. Man. Yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So another special moment that happened mm-hmm. um, was the crowning. Yes. Ooh. The crowning of our women of freedom. Mm -hmm. Can you take us into why it was really important for that moment to happen and why you specifically chose three different types Mm -hmm. of young women Mm. to be able to um, give their crowns back to or adjust their crown? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, I'm a firm believer of inclusion. I think so often as we walk through life, society has decided who's worthy of a crown. Mm. And I'm just a girl that is brave enough to say, I will fight against that, that misnomer, mm-hmm. these doctrines of belief that you got to be perfect to be able to be worthy of crown. You got to be this size. You got to have this history. You got to not have this part of your history mm-hmm. to be able to be crowned. Right. I'm saying that a girl that gave up her virginity really young, that a girl, people that have dealt with abortion or, mm-hmm. or, uh, things that are nasty or that people mm-hmm. would call ratchet, they're still worthy to be crowned. Mm-hmm. Why? Not because of specific letters behind their names or letters before their name. Not Mrs. Come on. Not mm. because they are DMDs or MDs. Mm. Not none of that. Great, like mom. not because they dress a certain way or they have enough money, but simply because there was a God who said they were valuable enough for him to give his life for, that he went to Calvary to give all that he had for them. That I'm gonna echo what the heaven says. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to settle for what society says. I'm gonna say that the girl that might have had a baby last month 
month that didn't know the, the even the circumstances that surrounded that she's worthy of a crown mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm gonna be the one to tell you hey hey you I know you make the wrong choice but when you decide to make the right choice that in the right path there's gonna be a crown right there that was always reserved for you that mm -hmm. I'm gonna fix and put back on your head I'm gonna say that the woman that might have counted herself out because there was a girl that I just described she was one I gave a crown there was another one that was a little older in age that might have counted herself out because maybe she's not as young and youthful mm -hmm. I am telling any woman I don't care what age if you still have breath you still have time mm -hmm. and I wanted all women of different likeness and demographics to be represented there was another young girl that was 16 decided to start tithing had dealt with suicide mm -hmm. had dealt with bullying I wanted every woman with all the different issues we have to understand that even with our issues our crown don't have to be taken it's great, he mom. didn't say that about you he didn't say that you weren't worthy of a crown and if he says that you are the beloved of God if he says that you are crown I'm going to be the one to echo heaven and remind you of what the father says and not only did I give those crowns on stage but every woman that came in conference even if it costs more coins for us mm -hmm. you're worth it mm -hmm. I worked I would spend that money a thousand times over to remind every woman that sees that keychain with that crown at the end that long lives the queen that mm -hmm. every day you wake up not just some days not the days that you feel valuable enough or you feel like you got it together or that you perform well or that mm -hmm. you exercise or you do the right thing right thing wrong thing Thing, up thing down thing all things counted you're worthy simply because God says so mm -hmm. because of what he did not because of what you do and if we can reconcile that key mm -hmm. if we can sit in that we will walk differently. We'll step mm. into rooms differently. We will step into relationship differently. We will step into boardrooms differently. I'm telling you, the reason why I'm sitting at this table differently mm. is because he adjusted my, my crown and reminded me every day, Jackie, long, long live, mm. every day live, Shh. on podcast Woo. live, in marriage live, with your girls live, like every day live as a queen because that's who you are. <laughs> Not because of anything you do, but because of what I said and what I did. Can you accept that? Can we talk about what makes it hard for us to accept oh. that? Because we don't, like, I don't want to just give you the soapbox, an mm -hmm. soapbox answer. Why is it so hard for us to accept that it's not about what we do? Mm. Why do we strive so much? I saw something um, on TikTok <laughs> I <love laughs> the it. other day. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm better. on culture. But I saw something on TikTok. It was a guy, he was saying, talking about how, you know, when Jesus was baptized, God cracks the sky open and says, this is my son whom I'm well, well pleased. pleased. And he started, he was like, you know, what would you do mm -hmm. if it's your moment of baptism, mm -hmm. right? It's your moment. And God cracks the sky open mm -hmm. and says, this is my daughter, Janiah, <sighs> with whom I'm well pleased. Like, how would you carry yourself? Like, you got the affirmation of, you got the public hey, affirmation mm -hmm. of heaven. You can now walk around like, <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but God cracked the sky <laughs> open for me. And he said that I'm his daughter with whom I'm well pleased. And he said, but so many times we walk around as if we don't already have that. Mm -hmm. He literally did it when he died mm -hmm. on the cross for us. Like he mm -hmm. said, you're worth it. Like he mm -hmm. said, like, but we live so many times. Like even I was so convicted because I don't walk around like mm -hmm. that all the time. Like, right, you know, I probably get a 60, 70%, you know, yeah, yeah. probably 90%, you know, mm -hmm. on, on a good day. But it's like, <laughs> do I really walk around with that confidence? And to answer your question, I think what stops me is so many times when I'm looking at me mm -hmm. and I like take what my- you looking? Right, I'm, look, I'm looking at like, okay, mm -hmm. if I really sit back and like process who I am and what I believe I'm capable of, you know, without the Father, anytime my focus is like, uh -oh. you know, you, worship is really like a focus and mm -hmm. what I put my focus. If mm -hmm. I'm really focusing on like my inadequacies, it's like, no, I really can't do this. Mm -hmm. That's what causes me to take my daughter head off yeah, yeah, yeah. and like put on this like striving hat. When <laughs> and the, the crazy thing is, everybody knows like you'll know you're like now nah, what's going Baby, on like yeah. you know something something is happening like you're a different person when you're mm -hmm. trying to figure it out or trying to make something happen trying to strive and trying to figure it out on your own which you know i'm not I don't, pt was saying yesterday i don't bet 100 i don't either not in that area <laughs> but i think it's um just to have that to come back to is like I always know I have a seat. Like mm. I always know like any time that I am, you know, like trying to out here like, eh, you know, I don't know if I, I was telling uh, 
key the other day. I was just like, I went through a season where I felt like guys weren't like feeling me mm. and stuff like that. You know, I love Jesus too much. You know, all those kind of things. But it's just like, even you tell me all the time, like, don't forget, you don't forget though, mm. like who you are. Mm. You're a woman of abundance. You're a woman of wealth. You're a woman of options. Dad. Like all that kind Come of stuff. Here. It just mm. comes with this understanding that like I got a crown. Yeah. Like I got, mm. and I gotta stop walking around like you know, like you boo boo head. Yeah, like I'm a boo boo head. <laughs> you know, like, I, I, I'm not a boo boo head. Like, I'm a daughter of Christ. So. I got a funny story to tell you. You don't know this, but your mom called me this morning. Oh, that's and, funny. Um, quick, quick. She did. And <laughs> she called me to just say thank you. Wow. She said, um, you cover my daughter so well. And I didn't know that Janaya could be any more spoiled than she is. Like, mm. Dr. Jackie, you've taken her level of spoiled to another <laughs> level. Like, she was saying with her Gucci shades, she needed Gucci shoes. <laughs> and I was proud. Because I told her she's royalty and she should mm. feel like that. Because the best deserves the best. Mm. And it was almost like a, Jackie, mm. you're doing a good job raising a royal daughter. Mm. Like, the fact that you're leveling up in what you expect from life. Mm. Like, not just material stuff, but yeah. like a confidence to know, like, no, I'm actually worth sitting in these rooms at these seats. Like, mm -hmm. that's the expectation. And your mom was happy that you're becoming more understanding of who you really were created mm -hmm. to be. There was no greater gift that she could have gave me than, like, the nod, like, mm -hmm. you're raising a godly daughter. Mm -hmm. Like, because godly daughters know that they deserve the best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It was good. It was special to me. Like, it wasn't like, always that way. I'm yeah. telling you. But the more um, he talked about earlier, just like the discipleship piece mm -hmm. and like me just being exposed to your life. Mm -hmm. Like there isn't a lot of times where we. I'm like, I'm coming to you. I'm like, oh, I'm dealing with this. But I see how you deal with certain situations. Whoa. I see how you like your first response is always Jesus. Like, yeah, like mm -hmm. it's just like this. It's this view of like, this is not what she tells me to do. Whoa. Like you actually like live this kind of stuff. And, mm -hmm. and by proxy, mm -hmm. I've just become this like, you know, I got it. Yeah, like, <laughs> no, what do you, you got? You checked us on that. You did. You checked us on that like, a, like, like six months did. ago or something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but it was so needed. Mm -hmm. It was so needed because I think um, – that that was my answer. I was trying to sit here and think like, what is that hindrance? I think a lot of people aren't, um, they're not raised to Ooh. understand that position. So we Whoa. go through most of our adult lives just having that societal default. And then like when we're 25 or we're like 30, <laughs> it's like, you a queen. And it's just like, <laughs> all right, girl. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, but you have to be taught. Mm. You have to be taught how Ooh. to, they groom, you know, like when you're in the palette, like you, do. you, you have to be groomed because your natural defaults, like our fleshly default is going to be that of below who we're called to be. And That's I think great. not enough people, um, are disciplers. Okay. To be in proximity to say, don't just look at me, but let me teach you mm -hmm. the way in which you lift up your head or how you carry yourself that you are enough and that the way to find that you are enough on a consistent basis is through the father. Mm -hmm. so good. You know, not through just telling yourself I'm a bad girl, but mm -hmm. why are you a bad girl, Keisha? Mm. What has the Lord been saying to you lately? And um, with the 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 checking of, you know, we, we was joking about mm. like, oh, stairs. <laughs> <laughs> but she was like, no, like, like, do, like you are women of wealth. Mm -hmm. Like that mm -hmm. you, you don't have this poverty mindset and mm -hmm. that, oh, like that man. you just gripping stuff together but like you you sh like you abundance is attracted to you but i think being taught mm -hmm. and that you know it's not just gonna happen by its most osmosis or it's not something that i can just like mantra my way that's into so good. that's because that's a lot great. of people say look yourself in the mirror and tell yourself <laughs> you a bad What's that girl word they mm -hmm. be manifest yeah, yeah man, like, i just manifest mm -hmm. you know let me just Baby. put it mm -mm. but it's like real you actual, read that bible in, yeah, in <laughs> your heart and mm -hmm. a heart transformation and, and openness yes, yes. <laughs> all of that um to be active reminders because mm -hmm. anyone would forget if you go mm -hmm. long enough mm -hmm. without like, mm -hmm. like you're a queen, like mm -hmm. you are a queen and you reminding yourself, like you, you know, it's, it's not just a one and done type mm -hmm. of thing, but mm -hmm. I think the teaching part has been critical for me. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to put on, I want to put daughterhood on check. Mm -hmm. So you talk about how we have to continue to go to the Lord and know what he's saying. What is God saying to you as a daughter? Like, mm -hmm. I want to ensure that these people know that we ain't just talking about this, this is real life daily what is he saying in this season to you as a daughter um, mine is about release mm. so I get the opportunity to oversee in my 
my job a lot of stuff mm -hmm. as a executive pastor there's a lot and um he's been pushing more into the pastoral part of it and mm. walking with people through some not easy mm. things and i i've been taking on weight mm. of like Stupid. um outcomes and Woo! just like well I, I want them to know my heart and i want the you know all of this stuff and i i, I didn't want it to end up this way or it's a lot that we're juggling and mm. There has been a consistent call and a draw to continue to release mm -hmm. um, the weight of it. And then I sit in my bed and I'm like, well, Lord, how do I release? You know, Woo! it's like, you're like, don't, don't carry these things in. But I'm like, teach me how. Like, I want to know how. I don't want this. This is not my desire to walk around weighted because I understand the more I walk around weighted, like I'm exhausted. Mm. You've not called me to live a life of exhaustion. If you put these things in my path, then like like your your joy is my strength but Whoa. i don't feel strong i don't feel energized and so there's been this constant teaching and guiding of releasing this weight mm. the weight of the call mm. like that that is there's weighty mm. but i don't have to be weighted mm -hmm. so that's what he's walking me through mm -hmm. every day mm -hmm. <laughs> every, every day, day. <laughs> every day i'm releasing something. i love that in this moment we're modeling not just saying keisha i see you as a queen or i love you mm -hmm. but there's a demonstration of love when i look you in the eye and i give ear to what's actually mm -hmm. in you that I think people say all the time, like, I'll be present for you and what you say matter, but they don't listen when you talk. <laughs> they don't give you an opportunity to talk. Mm -hmm. I want to champion and challenge more women to pause and let somebody else say something. Mm -hmm. And when they're saying it, look them in the eyes and hear them. Mm -hmm. Like, more than just saying, like, women in this platform are valuable, I'm going to give you opportunity over and over mm -hmm. and over again mm -hmm. to have something to say. And I remembered moments where I would have asked that question. She wouldn't have had nothing to say. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't have either. <laughs> Like, I'm just saying that to say, like, we weren't always here. We're mm -hmm. getting better at stewarding moments of devotion and private time so that in public times, this is nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty. These these tables are weary when you're trying to have something. Mm -hmm. Like, but when it's just an overflow of what mm -hmm. you're actually already mm -hmm. spending time to do, it becomes delight. Mm -hmm. Like, we've been talking for a while, and it's so delightful mm -hmm. because it's just a flow. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give that as a a thing to carry like don't want a platform so much that you don't just steward life mm -hmm. so that when you get a platform you actually have delight mm -hmm. platforms are weighty mm -hmm. to her point mm -hmm. executive pastor is weighty being an executive assistant is weighty like carrying the load of more people and managing more is weighty mm -hmm. and you want the ability to be able to exchange that weight mm -hmm. but that comes by way of being able to exchange the weight even personally mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Um, for me, it's affirmation. Um, God has just been talking to me about, so by definition, to affirm means to uh, exert truth. Mm. So it's like a truth can always be there, but until you like accept it, you know, and it's, it doesn't have to always be positive truth. Oh, that's it good. could be a truth that like, you know, God revealing like something, you know, about me and for, you know, is my, my voice in this mm. season um, about like just speaking more. And, and I think he, the truth he exerted to me was that I was not using the platforms that he just already given really me good. that I had all, I had, he had been giving me these opportunities over the, like even we, very transparently Monday mm. we had a permission room which you know another plug coming soon <laughs> <laughs> it's on the way. Uh, we had permission room with uh some of the coaches and it was uh alongside another young lady it was our opportunity to share um and I didn't give my fullness and not mm. I think I was passing over the thought that this is an opportunity mm. like I was not saying like you know because this isn't what I envisioned using whoa, my voice would look whoa. like like you th that's I, that was like a real thought I think you're off the other day I told you it was because I was in my head but probably it was really because like when he started saying like I want you to use more, your voice more I was probably thinking you know like engage night or something like you know it's permission room like show up fully every, moment. Mm -hmm. every single moment like show up to like use your voice in a way and he had been telling me like you know Jordan when you open when you open your mouth I feel it da 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 but it's just like for me to receive um, even when he, you know, checked me this week about like my actual, like why I didn't show up fully on Monday, it, it was affirmation, even oh. though it wasn't, mm. you know, like it was truth, you know, and because, because I'm a daughter, I can receive it as not like, man, God hurt my feelings, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like good. it was more so like. I will never not show up in any moment again mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he has already affirmed over me that like any moment I give you to say 
anything. And now that I'm thinking back over the week, it was Sunday too with uh our volunteer huddle. Keisha mm. left me out there. <laughs> she was like dealing with the kids. Yes, I was like <laughs> actively busy. <laughs> she, was she was like, I need you to hold down huddle. And I was like, okay, cool, got it. And because I had just been like filtering through, I was not focused on like this is an opportunity. Mm. And so that was just another example of like he's telling me like in any opportunity it does not have to be what you think it is it's what i say it is mm. in the moment mm. and so just receiving it and letting me affirm you as a daughter so that's what it is for me in this season and you know it's a little rebuke in there but i, I received it because i'm a daughter <laughs> yeah. Amen. i love it i love it and i i would say just at large for this banner and what we carry for drjg that is the hallmark mm -hmm. of all, like when me and Keisha were still in college in every room or whatever mm -hmm. he's called it, there's no room too small. I definitely received that as a gift from my mom. She is by, by product. There's no moment too small. Mm -hmm. Like I don't care if it's one-on-one, -on -one, if it's groceries, every moment that you get an opportunity to connect, you use that moment. And so I would, for some people would call take moments too seriously mm -hmm. because I saw every moment as a moment and mm -hmm. I don't pass by moments mm -hmm. because moments make you prepare for other moments. It's great. So mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. Hey man. Yeah. yeah. This, is, this is complete. I think this <laughs> yes. is good. Um, I just want to say this. I want y'all to stay in this flow with us. Mm -hmm. Continue to follow us, flow with us. Um, we're going to be wanting to come directly to you. I don't want to pass you by or kind of hit you on the side. Like I want you come in and letting us know what this makes you think about so that we're able to continue to hit the heart of where you are in your permission journey to be able to speak directly to real issues and real things that I think real women face. Mm -hmm. um, this is permission talk. We'll see y'all next week. Hey, ladies, I hope y'all enjoyed episode one of our Permission Podcast, and we want y'all to stick around. So go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, share this with a friend, and make sure y'all join us every single week. And we've been talking about Permission World. Mm -hmm. So that is the community that Dr. Jackie has started, and it's over on Facebook. So go ahead, jump in, subscribe, so you can make sure we can continue the conversation yeah. and grow deeper, all the challenges and things that we've been sharing. Mm -hmm. So head over to Permission World right now. Love y'all.